What's up, wall fans, common sensors, and of course, podcast consumers? Welcome to another very exciting video feed of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell to the Wall. And uh, we got a lot of stuff to get into, and you happen to catch, uh, you're in for a treat. This is a, uh, a little bit of a milestone episode that we're getting into here. Uh, so with that being said, let's get right into episode 116. All right, wall fans, common sensors, podcast consumers, welcome to another very exciting edition of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell to the Wall, hosted by me, your absolute favorite podcast host, the one and only Sean O'Rourke, and this is episode 116. And not only is it episode 116, but it is a bit of a milestone episode. This kind of creeps up on me like every single year. And uh, we're going to talk about that, but first I want to get into some social plugs and and uh, and the, the usual housekeeping, and then we're going to talk a little bit about that. So, uh, if you're not aware, you can keep up with us before episodes, after episodes, during episodes, whenever you so please, and you can do that in multiple locations. One of those would be facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. That's right, facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. Uh, if you're not a Facebook user, but you enjoy the YouTube, head on over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash go tell it to the wall or at go tell it to the wall. Either one of those will take you to our official YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and check back for our video feeds, our video clips, our album reviews, all kinds of great stuff on there. And of course, uh, if you are an Instagram user, we don't have an official Instagram, but I have one. It is my own personal Instagram and it is at SoCalSean, S-O-C-A-L-S-E-A-N, at SoCalSean, uh, on Instagram, I know I've been saying for a few episodes I have a lot of content to get up, uh, and it's all sitting in the hopper. The problem is, uh, not really problem, but my time has been consumed uh, by a lot of my other work, and I'm handling social media uh, for the agency I now work with, and uh, and so that's been eating up a lot of my like Instagram posting time, which is all good. Uh, but that's why I know I keep promising it, and I swear they're coming. They're all sitting there. I just haven't had time to actually put it all together and get it on there. But uh, either way, you can follow my own personal Instagram account at SoCalSean, S-O-C-A-L-S-E-A-N. And, of course, we have the official website, uh, not only for Go Tell It to the Wall and Common Sense Sundays, but all, really for everything that revolves around the Go Tell It to the Wall universe, and that would be SeanOroqueLive.com. That's right, SeanOroqueLive.com. Uh, it's not only is it your one-stop shop for everything having to do with, uh, go tell it's the wall and again, everything revolving around it. Uh, but you're going to find links to those things I just mentioned. You're also going to find exclusive content on there that we don't post on the social platform. So make sure you bookmark that. Uh, and in addition, of course, you're also going to find a link to our Patreon campaign. If you want to help us out financially, Patreon is a great way to do so. And if you don't want to get involved with Patreon, although I assure you there's nothing like Patreon is the best of the best. Honestly, I mean, coffee is, is really good, too, but as far as the, the share that goes to the creators and everything else. Uh, but you can pick up some Common Sense merch through our merch website, which also links directly from uh, SeanOroqueLive.com, so make sure you're checking that out. All right, as I mentioned at the very top there, this is a bit of a milestone episode, so uh, just to set the mood a little bit. And if you've been a longtime listener, you're, you've been used to this, and maybe you were aware of it, and it, kind of, it always sneaks up on me every year. Uh, but back on October 7th, 2016, uh, Go Tell It's a Wall was born. It's funny, that was the very first episode that was posted. It wasn't even episode one, it was episode zero. Uh, so if, if you're a more recent listener, subscriber, and everything else, uh, I would encourage you to go back and listen to episode zero. Uh, it was just, it was thrown together. I didn't even know how to post a podcast. I didn't know what to do with it. I went into to the, the extra bedroom at our old house, which uh, we didn't start doing video until like 20 episodes in, so there's no video of that. There is video, but it hasn't been posted because uh, I just had a little GoPro sitting there. Went into this other room, sat down, talked into a microphone for like 50 minutes, a little, little under an hour, and uh, threw that out into the world. And now here we are seven years later on October 9th, 2023, so seven years and two days later, uh, we are, we are officially celebrating our seventh anniversary, seven years. And I know there's a lot of listeners out there that have been listening since the beginning. Uh, there's a lot of listeners that have, have joined in over the past couple years. Uh, interestingly, we took a little bit of a break when COVID hit. We've had breaks here and there, you know, 
we always, and we always take like a holiday break and sometimes there's schedule conflicts and everything else and so it's not we often miss it we just missed one last week <laughs> so i get it uh but oddly when when we came back and, and implemented common sense sundays instead of just the go tell it to the wall format uh, that was maybe because people were stuck at home, <laughs> so they had nothing else to listen to but me, uh, among other things. Uh, but we really grew a lot over that, that year that was 2020 and moving into 2021 uh, and just continue to see that growth. And that's why uh, so many people help out to keep this thing going. Uh, you know, so many people promote it and, uh, and we continually gain um, listeners and subscribers and everything else. And, and, and that's just continued and it ebbs and flows. <laughs> Trust me, this thing can be stressful for me as well. There was times where sitting in this studio has been st as stressful as you can imagine. Um, but we've we've continued. We've soldiered on and here we are seven years later. Um, and I know this is the funny thing is uh, I, I, I haven't mentioned it in a while. Uh, but for those of you that have been around for a while, you know, we did a little hundredth episode celebration. We called it the Centibration. Uh We have since then passed 200 and we are approaching approaching 300. Uh, and for those of you not aware, what we did was we actually brought in patrons, uh, wall supporters, people that have have financially supported, as well as people some people that have been around since the beginning. Uh, we brought in our on air producers and had everybody in and around the studio. It was quite the wild time, and I intend to do that uh, very soon and just do kind of a, a patron celebration, and and maybe it'll be. For the 300th episode, I don't know. We're going to figure it out. But if you're interested in, in getting involved in that, uh, definitely become a patron, pick up some merch, become a wall supporter, uh, or you know, hit me up and, and let me know why I should welcome you into this studio. If you're somebody I know, there's a better chance. Uh, but if I've never met you before, you're going to need to become a patron at that point. So look forward to that at some point. But here we are seven years later. Uh, and for those of you, some of you are probably familiar with this. What I like to do on the anniversary episodes is kind of look back on certain things. So we're going to do a little bit of that throughout the episode today um, and, and kind of looking back to what we started with seven years ago. And it's funny, I should have, for the video, people watching the video feed, uh, I just had this tiny little USB mic. I'm very familiar with, with audio, you know, anal essentially analog audio, not digital. So I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to buy a whole soundboard tiny little USB mic plugged into my computer and uh, and and that was the start of what is what is now go tell it to the wall it was always go tell it to the wall in fact I had the idea for the name go tell it to the wall in like April of 2016 did nothing with it and we'll kind of talk about the inspiration what, what finally just got me to sit down and do the thing uh, kind of as we go through episode 116 of common sense Sundays uh, and of course we're going to talk some digital trends. The interesting thing with this is when we first started out at Go with Go Tell Us the Wall, this was not really a specific topic that we talked about. Now, clearly, there was some inspiration to it. Uh, it evolved kind of into its own topic. It, it would be interwoven throughout uh, because in, in the world we live in now and, you know, even in 2016, social media is king and and. You know, and obviously not the entire world, but it, it's such a fast way to get information, see what's trending and all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of how it started and then evolved into specifically looking at topics. Um, but for those of you that do remember from the beginning, there was a couple things that, that definitely came from the social realm that were bread and butter when we first started out. Um, <coughs> excuse me. One of those would be uh, the creepy clowns. If you remember in 2016, people were scaring the hell out of random people on the street dressed as creepy clowns. And this was like a, 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 a I don't want to call it a pandemic. You can't joke about that word after 2020, but it was an epidemic. That would be the right, right word of people running around scaring. Nobody knew what was going on with these creepy clowns, uh, but that was one of them. And, and, and I still always talk about that to this day because that was one of the first things that people kind of reached out to us on and were like, oh my God, the creepy clowns. Oh my God, the creepy clowns. Uh, and the other one that still, seven years later, is ingrained into what we do here at Go Tell It to the Wall uh, are the challenges. I, I'm trying to remember, uh, so when we first started this, I, I had no idea that gray sweatpants on guys were like a thing. And, the you know, yes, I know people would wear them, but I didn't know it was a thing. So we had the gray sweatpant challenge. 
Uh, and I believe the Tide Pod stuff was also happening in 2016 when we first launched this podcast. So we have since then evolved into talking about things specific to Twitter, dumb things, dumb challenges, common sense things, and of course, funny things that you find on the social platforms. Uh, not a lot of funny stuff this week, but we are going to talk about some current stuff. Uh, first off is Twitter. I am still not calling it that thing. It's Twitter. Enough with that. We're calling it. Tw it's funny. Everybody still calls it. Tw like, why, why are we even doing this thing? Nonetheless, uh, Twitter and Musk, he decided they, d they made a little change on story headlines. Uh, so, you know, if you post a link uh, to Twitter, and it, this has since changed, it would populate, like a, you post a link to a website, it would populate the title of an article. It would tell you what you're going to. Uh, now, since then, Musk has removed that, and his whole thought process is he doesn't want people clicking from Twitter to go to other stuff, which is utterly ridiculous, because if if you follow any, go tell it to all on any social platforms, you know what we do. I finish this up, we do a, just a little bit of finessing on it, not really editing, but make it sound a little better. It goes through our RSM feed, which, uh, shout out to Podomatic, who we have been using since the beginning, and they have always, seven years, they've been great to us. Uh, and then from there, it, it's hosted there, it goes out to all the various, you know, podcast uh, apps and websites and everything else. So many of you, some of you listen on Spotify, I know we have a lot of people listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, and all the all the other various, I mean, like, I've talked about this before. Sometimes someone will be like, oh, I saw your podcast on blah, blah, I'm like, what is that? And it's a podcast thing. But that's, my host puts it all out to everyone. But then what we do is we take it and throw it on Facebook so that people who follow the page on Facebook then see that. It, and that obviously takes you somewhere else. So a lot of people are using these social platforms for this. So this is, you know, not helping people that utilize it in that way. Additionally, people found a workaround because... If they're not actually sharing the news story titles, what people and this is the whole thing, you see Musk post about it. I don't follow him, but people share it that he's trying to uh, combat misinformation and bots. This is his way of doing it, and it's like, okay, so people ran with it and obviously put headlines that didn't match up to the article, but it would say New York Post or something like that. So this has back backfired spectacularly uh, on Elon Musk. We'll see if it, it you know, we'll see how if he goes back on this i don't know but it's not working right now the whole site's not working for god's sake i see people leaving all the time i'm still on there but i just scroll and i get stupid stuff to talk about on the podcast it's fantastic uh, or honestly so, like if something crazy happens in the in the sports world uh i'm i'm like straight to twitter i'm like oh my god what are we saying about this right now and you know you have sports personalities that are talking crazy and you know not crazy bad just like uh, you know, for example, if a, a, an upset happens, a team that's not supposed to win wins, I go there and I'm like, whew, what are people saying about this? And outside of that, it really is uh, quite the hellscape, Twitter. Uh, but we'll, we'll keep an eye there and see if uh, I don't see him fixing anything <laughs> with, with that damn app and website. But who knows? All right. Influencers in public. This one I actually really love. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've ever seen this. And we've had stories, you know, here and there over the years about uh and, like, Disney was cracking down on them. At one time we were talking about that and Disney influencers and how they aren't allowing selfie sticks on rides now and everything else. And, you know, people are getting in the way. And I tell, I'll tell you, if it's young kids, I do tend to get it. But I see adults doing these silly TikTok dances, like, in the middle of a walkway. And it's like, grow up. Do something else. Uh, and so what's happening is there's a guy. I don't even know who it is. But I keep getting fed his stuff. Uh, and he will find videos of influencers getting mad and it's the best because it's always like an influencer who's just standing on the, a sidewalk like in new and then they get mad at people for walking between them and the camera and it's like yo this is not your private studio for filming here it is a public space and gyms that's the big one is i see so many and people are like you're passing and they're like this is a gym and, and don't get me started on the fact that you shouldn't be recording in a gym you want to do that with your workouts go get some weights at home do it at home be an adult uh, but I love this guy because he's calling people out on it and pointing out that you don't own these things. If you really want to do it, fine. But you can't get mad at people for getting in the way. That's what's extra ridiculous about this is, uh, for those of you that know, I went to film school. Uh, I had to learn about getting permits for filming in public. And now what happens is because of technology, people can just do whatever the hell they want and think that it's just their world and everything revolves around them. 
My favorite thing is influencers saying, do you know who I am? And it's like, no, I, I don't. What are you? You're TikTok famous. You know, it used to be Instagram famous. Now it's TikTok famous. And it's like, OK, get over yourself. That's fine. Do what you want to do. Don't inconvenience other people. So good on this guy for, for pointing it out. And I'm seeing these like crazy. It's, it's really, uh, really hilarious. All right. We had a viral video and this was actually from a while ago, but it caught caught steam because there was a court case attached to it. And this video was a couple of guys, uh, and you know how I feel about these kinds of things, it was a couple of guys that were clearly doing, like, these prank videos. And I don't even know exactly what they were doing, but this guy's minding his own business. They're in a mall. They're in, like, a food court. And they're, like, shoving a phone in his face and saying something to him. And I, I, I don't care enough to listen to these videos. But the guy tries to walk away. They keep following him. And the guy who's having stuff shoved in his face pulls out a gun and shoots one of the guys. Now, let's unpack this for a sec. That is clearly an overreaction. I'm not saying anybody should get shot for these things, uh, but they did go to court, and the guy was found not guilty uh, because clearly you could see from the video evidence that these guys technically were getting in his face. This, you know, So it is technically self-defense. A little overboard on the self-defense, but I'm not that mad at the guy. What I am mad about, and I, and I, again, clear overreaction. But this needs to be a teaching moment for everyone out there that goes around and does these things because I am so sick of the prank videos. You see them, and, and it's always younger people, these so-called influencers are trying to play pranks on random people doing stuff out in public, and this is what happens. Enough with the pranks. You know, we've, we've seen this. There was that story a while ago where, where some kids put a, 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 one of those big buckets on a woman's head in like a Home Depot or a hardware store, and she, ended up, she had epilepsy, ended up having a serious episode and got hurt. So we got to stop these kinds of things. Again, we don't need to shoot anybody, but just knock it off. That's enough of that. I mean, that's just straight up common sense. I just cannot with these pranks anymore. Here's the other one, too, that kills me. And I, I feel like I mention this every year, but it, it ramps up every year around this time when football season starts. Every fall we get these videos. And I know they happen throughout the year. I live in Los Angeles. Don't send me the messages and say, well, Dodger Stadium. No, I, I get it. But you, you notice they really ramp up when football season starts. And it's these fights in the stands at professional sporting events. And it gets glorified because we put them all on video. And here's the thing. And like I said, it is I feel like it escalates every year. It gets more and more violent, more and more ridiculous. We had a guy uh, who actually passed away uh, from being punched and then hit his head in New England at a Patriots game. I believe it was in, yes, it had to be in New England. I know it was a Patriots game. The guy was a Patriots fan. It's just not worth it. Why are we getting into fight? You know, everyone has a little too much to drink. You're cheering for different teams maybe. And even that, I see people wearing the same team jerseys and stuff fighting each other. It's like, it's, okay, guys, people, women, whoever, whoever's getting in fights, it's a game. You're getting in a fight over millionaires playing a game. You paid hundreds of dollars to go watch millionaires play a game and you're getting in fights. Costs you like $20 a beer and you're getting in fights. Find something better to do. Nothing, nothing's worth getting in. Now, if someone comes up and punches you in the face, but that's not what it is. This is smack talking. People are talking trash and then eventually they square up and then, then hits are thrown. But it's, it's a game. Just cooler heads need to start prevailing because I'm tired of seeing these things. I really am. And people are, oh, and they, oh you know... What was it, a world star? Oh, no. Grow up. Nobody, nobody should be getting hurt over millionaires playing a fucking game. There's no reason. All right, one more thing before we move on to mental health. Hashtag Indigenous Peoples Day. Today is Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, depending on the state you live in, thank God for California, here it is Indigenous Peoples Day. So a very uh, happy Indigenous Peoples Day to everyone out there. Uh, with an indigenous background, native background. Um, this is, we had corrected an oversight a few years ago, and I know other states and cities have done this. Uh, for those of you familiar, it was at one time Columbus Day, and some people still insist on celebrating Columbus Day. Uh, and people that complain about it not being Columbus Day anymore uh, are, for the most part, horrible people. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's move on to some mental health. An update. My ear is is almost completely better, almost. I still I still don't have full hearing, but it was 
And I swear, I said that last episode. I I plugged in my monitors to the microphone today and I went to do a mic test and oh, that's really loud. So I could based on that alone, I could tell my hearing's getting slightly better, but I'm still still a little bit going on on the left side here. All right, so mental health. Uh, again, when we started the podcast, this was always going to be a core tenet of what we talked about at Go Tell It to the Wall. Um, and it's because mainly beca- because this is a conversation that needs to be had. And I have struggled with mental illness uh, really since I, m- my entire life, but knowingly uh, since I was a teenager uh, and, and finally realized that's what's going on and I needed to, to get help for it. Um, and at that time, because, you know, I am 40, uh, mental health was so stigmatized. Mental illness was so stigmatized that it was tough. So I knew that once I was going to be yelling at a wall, talking about things I wanted to talk about, uh, that mental health was going to be a factor. And I'm not. And it's tremendous to see the strides that we have taken over not only seven years. And I'm not saying it's me that has done that. It's just that as a society, we have become become more understanding of mental health issues and mental illness. People of note have become more vocal about it than they were when I was a kid. And it's amazing to see those strides that have happened. And it's, it's, it's something that could have always happened. It's just it took enough people being open about it and talking about it uh, to get to where we are today. And that's why we here at Go Tell Us Wall always talk about it openly. And while I am not a, a doctor or a psychiatrist or a psychologist, uh, I simply talk on my own, based on my own experiences and conversations with other people who deal uh, with certain mental health problems or, and or mental illness. So I just want to talk about a couple things here um, and then we'll move on from, from mental health. Uh, and this is, I feel like we talk a little bit about this every year um, and that's taking breaks from socializing. Uh, and, and this, this kind of, I want to come at this from two angles. Uh, it, it's, first of all, it's okay to stay home. Don't feel pressured. You know, and it's always a thing. And we see funny videos. <laughs> I've seen these doorbell videos where a couple guys will roll up to a house and they're trying to get their buddy to go out to the bar and have a drink. And this may seem harmless, you know, and it can be. I'm not saying knock this off. I'm just saying be cognizant of, of what you're doing. Uh, so from both sides, if, if you don't feel like it's going to be beneficial or, you know, and it's one not even just it isn't going to be beneficial because not everything has to be beneficial to your mental health. Uh, but if it's going to be detrimental and you know that, or you feel that way, don't feel guilty about staying home, backing out of social obligations. There's obvious ones where, you know, you can't. I, I might be having a bad day, but my kid has a dance recital. I am going to that dance recital. However, going out to like a show or the movies or dinner with friends, if you're just not feeling up to it, don't let that guilt eat you up inside. And I tend to talk about this in the fall of every year uh, because the holidays are coming up. And that's you can feel a lot of pressure from family and friends during the holidays to to kind of participate in things and go out and do things. And uh, everyone thinks it's all, you know, light and fluffy, for lack of a better phrase. But it's not always the case. Sometimes people just need to disconnect. And it doesn't mean uh, there's anything wrong with them even. It's just sometimes you need to be introverted for a little while. And that's okay. That's okay. And from the other side, don't take it personally when someone, especially if you're aware that they deal with um, social anxiety, those kinds of things, be aware that just because they say, you know, what, I can't tonight, I'm staying, I got to stay home. Don't look for, you know, don't ask for reasons, anything like that. Just respect that. And don't put that extra pressure. And if it's a good friend, you can kind of read those situations, you know. Uh, my wife's really good about doing that with me. She's had to deal with me for well over 10 years and uh, and so she can kind of read me on those things. And it's it. And while it's not pressure, she may know that I just need a few minutes or that, you know what? Nope. You need more than a few minutes here. Um, take the time for yourself. That's it's, and especially during the holidays, because there's so much stress and anxiety and pressure put on. Put on you from friends and family and everything else during you know, October, November, December, even into January, uh, because that's what you do. But don't let your mental health suffer because of that. And don't put that pressure on other people that you may know and love who have those mental health problems 
uh, and, and trying to pressure them to go out. You know, it's okay. And if actually, if you go to um, the YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash go tell us the wall, there's actually a, a video that we have up there talking about uh, extroverted introverts and, and kind of the, the reasoning and thinking and attitude behind that based on my own experiences, uh, if you want to kind of delve into that a little bit further. Again, I'm not a doctor, but uh, I have experienced many of these things, and so I can speak from those experiences and from talking to others and their experiences. All right, positive news. Uh, this was, you know, this is funny because we ha definitely haven't always done positive news. Uh, we would talk about positive things in 2016. Uh, the Chicago Cubs won the World Series, and if you go back and listen to that, uh, my mother, my mother's family, my grandmother, uh, were hardcore Cubs fans, and that happened not long after we launched this podcast. So obviously we talked about positive things, um, but it was really added in a couple years ago to balance out <laughs> the ranting and raving at a wall that tends to happen in this studio so often, um, and I kind of wanted to do that to force myself to have kind of a positive uh, story, a positive mindset, at least for part of an episode. Um, and that's why today I want to talk about the fact that we have been doing this for seven years and still going. And so many things have changed in that time, really. Uh, the landscape has changed. Um, the politi <laughs> politics is on a whole nother level. Uh, you think about how many conflicts have happened uh, over that seven-year period and just and the, the ever-changing thing. The studio moved. Uh, I did not have purple hair seven years ago, and I think a lot of these are positive things that we have uh, moved along and, and, and created with this environment that is Go Tell to the Wall. This this wall behind me, this sticker wall, for those of you watching the video, uh, that started with like three stickers, and here it is. Uh, and this isn't even seven years later. I mean, well, it's close to seven years later because, uh, again, we had a different studio until we moved and then uh, had a little hiatus, so it was... A few months in the old studio and then into this one. And uh, we've kind of built everything up over the years. We've brought in new equipment thanks to a lot of our patrons and people that, that helped out years ago with our Indiegogo campaign uh, and those that will literally just send a few bucks and say, here, up, upgrade this or use this toward whatever. And uh, ever, ever so thankful uh, for all those things. And it, it's a, I see it as a positive thing uh, that not only we have been doing this for seven years, but I have made friends because of this podcast uh, and and I think those are all very positive things to look back on over the past seven years and look forward to uh, over many many more years to come hopefully uh, hopefully we can retain listeners and and not lose them all um, and I will say the other positive thing I know we miss shows because and it's there's just so many things going on we can't, I can't quite we'll we'll do a good week then another you know back-to-back -back weeks, and then sometimes there will be a week or two in between. We take the holiday break. The first time from launch, October 7th, 2016, uh, the first time that we actually missed an episode was just a few weeks later, uh, and it was when my daughter was born. And uh, we used to record on Thursdays. My wife went into the hospital early, early labor, uh, on a Thursday, and my daughter was born the following morning. And it was one of those things where... And I was thinking of Jeff Goldblum, and I was like, sometimes life literally gets in the way. And so it was a very positive thing uh, to be missing the very first the first episode we were ever missing. Uh, and that's going to move us right into parenting. Now, parenting was always going to be uh, at least a topic that we talked about uh, on Go Tell It to the Wall. It was always planned. Because like I said, I, I'm pretty sure my wife was already pregnant when I came up with the Go Tell It to the Wall name. Uh, but the whole parenting side, and and I will say, it was supposed to be like a cool dad thing. I don't know how cool of a dad I am, but I can talk about my parenting experiences. Uh, and it was actually a friend of mine uh, at Burning Man who uh, we had talked about, you know, uh, and I knew I had a kid on the way. I had, I had recently finished my contract at Universal where I was working in the marketing team. And uh, I was like, you know what, I'm going to use this as branding. I will be able to have time to, to be a full-time, you know, uh, uh, stay at home parent, but still be able to do these things. And, uh, and that's when a friend of mine said, Hey, you, you, you're going to have a kid. You should talk about being a cool dad. And again, I don't know how cool of a dad I am, but we do talk about the parenting uh, aspect. And in fact, that is a big part of what was the final push to get actual episodes out there and not just have a Facebook group 
or a Facebook page that had like two likes, one of them being my wife. And it's, that's what I did. I created this Facebook group or page, Go Tell It to the Wall. And that's the one you see. We've built off it since then. But I did that in like April. Didn't do anything with it till October. Uh, so it was very much inspired. So when you wonder why people love Burning Man and stuff like that, that's just one example of, of community coming together, inspiring, and then kind of motivating me personally to actually get that done. And that that was the start of, of uh, you know, seven years ago and brought us to where we are today. Uh, so this is, I talk about this all the time, and I'm never going to stop talking about it because it, this is it's October. So warning parents, and that's the thing is I, most parents, you know, if, if your kids are watching PBS Kids or, you know, you, you, they're, they're doing streaming and you have, uh, you know, have it set to TV show, they're not going to have this problem. But every year October rolls around, and it's a problem throughout the year, but it's especially bad in October. Uh, and if you're watching sporting events, and like basically as of this week, maybe next week, I mean right now, preseason, but all four major sports even, in fact, five, if you want to count uh, Major League Soccer here in the U.S., all five are playing at this time. This is the convergence of all the pro sports. I'm sure if you have friends that are into uh, certain kinds of sports, like they're maybe spending their entire Saturday watching college football, their entire Sunday watching uh, NFL football. They're, they're running home to watch the playoff baseball games. They're getting ramped up for hockey and basketball, which are starting up right now. They're getting uh, rushing home to watch the uh, soccer playoffs, whatever it might be. Here's the thing. Once the calendar hits October, if you watch these events, it could be noon on a Saturday and you could end up with a horror film commercial in the middle of a like a football game you're watching. Now, if you have like a 15 year old watching it, that's probably fine. If you have a five, six, seven, eight, even 10 year old watching it might freak them out a little bit. So, again, I am pleading with networks and with every kind of sports organization really in the world, but especially in this country, because that's where I see them. Knock it off with the horror commercials in live sporting events. Because what happens is, so most people, when you're watching live, you know, and this is this is something we did <laughs> when we were younger. Uh, for those of you that are very young, you're probably like, wait, you, you, you couldn't fast forward through commercials or blah, 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 you know. And it's like, no, you couldn't. You know, the, what happened was you're watching a show in primetime, a sitcom. You're like, all right, commercial, let's, let's go to the bathroom. Let's grab the snack, do whatever it is. Uh, and, you know, so if you watch live sports, maybe you don't. You know, that's not so much the case anymore these days. But if you're watching live sports, it is because you don't want to miss uh, some of that particular game. You can't you can't just get up and let, let the commercials play. You got to be watching it, making sure your kid is not suddenly seeing a commercial for Saw 10 or whatever it is. And all these other horror movies that come out in October. Full respect to the horror genre. It's just I just don't need my my kid seeing it. I, I don't. So please, please, please knock it off with it during live events. Do them at late at night, or if it's a clearly an adult, like show, you know, not, not pornography. I mean, do it there if you want. Uh, but you know, it, an adult. Uh, oh my gosh, targeted. That's the word I'm looking for. An adult targeted show, by all means. But sporting events, like kids, should be able to watch sporting events and not see uh, crazy commercials for horror films that could give them nightmares. Like, come, on, I, this is common sense, and I just don't get it anymore. And as a parent, it's so frustrating. Uh, here's an awesome thing that uh, that I experienced over the weekend. Uh, so we had a kid's birthday party. You know, obviously some some uh, family friends, we, friends we've known since before all of us had kids. You know, so we uh, and then now we have kids similar ages, and uh, so we go to this birthday party, and it was a Lego themed birthday party. I'm like, cool. And and my kid is super into Legos. That's that's one of the things she's gotten in really into lately, uh, really for the past like years, year and change. Uh, and so it's a Lego party. So I, I walk in and I go, I see like one of the kids side, you know, it's a long table, but it's for kids to sit at. And there's these little bins of mini fig, mini fig. That's what they call them. But they're little Lego people. For those of you not aware of the term mini fig, little Lego people that have been, you know, when, when I was a kid, they were very basic. And now there's like all kinds of fancy hair and different faces and stuff like that. All kinds of crazy stuff. And so it was all the pieces for these minifigs and little accessories for them and stuff. And what they did was they set up this as an activity. And they said, all right, kids, make yourself, yourselves two minifigs. And they went and bought uh, the little plates that you can sit on. I probably sh yeah. for those of you watching video, I should have had one sitting here because I've got minifigs behind me uh, on the shelves here. You just can't see them. You see them in the pictures for those of you that ever, if you're a patron, you see them. They're, you get, you get an 
awesome exclusive photo every episode that, that literally nobody else gets because it is just completely raw and unedited. It's f- still photo from the studio uh, during the episode. Uh, so what they did, and they had these stands, and they said you can make two of them, and then you can take them home. And what they did was they just bought a bunch of, uh, some of it used, and they just bought a bunch of minifig pieces, and that was it was an activity for the kids to do, and it was something for them to take home. And I'd never thought about this, but I saw that, and, I, and I'm talking to my buddy, and I'm like, this is fantastic. He's like, yeah, it was pretty easy, too. We just got a bunch of it, and you, you put it out there, and the kids are they're occupied looking through it, and they're having a blast. And, I mean, if, ki- if, if a kid is into Legos, they're into these minifigs, because when, when we were kids, you couldn't just buy minifigs. Now it's like a whole thing. That, that's why there's a bunch behind me, because I have the whole set of Muppets. Uh, up here and they just came in like a blind bag it's just the figure it's not like back then you had to buy like a set and it came with like a couple little figures you know Uh, but this was just a brilliant idea and I'm definitely going to keep that in mind especially if my kid ever has a Lego themed birthday party Uh, but highly recommend that if your kids are into Legos and of a a certain age even if a kid's not super into Legos they're at least moderately into and they're going to enjoy building a little minifig I'll be honest I even built one I was like all right where's where's a bearded face (laughs) Uh, this looks like a torso with a hoodie. <laughs> it was basically, I mean, it's not exact, but it, I, I made do with what I could. And I found a megaphone. So, of course, I had to put a megaphone in his hands. Because if you've seen uh, the Muppet version of the Go Tell Us the Wall logo. Oh, it's behind me on the wall here for you, for those of you watching the video. Uh, holding a big megaphone there. All right, one last thing before we move on from parenting to common sense. Uh, getting kids to clean up. Oh, my God. And this is something you always joke about. Like, it's a running theme. It's like I'm just constantly cleaning up after my kid. And uh, I remember, now see, my parents were a little spoiled, at least as I got to be like 11 or 12. Uh, they didn't have to clean up after me. You know, you hear teenage boys and stuff, and it's like how Phil, no. I, my OC, my obsessive compulsive disorder went into complete effect uh, at that point, and, uh, and, and I, nobody was having to clean up after me ever. Uh, but it's toys and clutter and stuff, and, and uh, you, you, you got to train the kids to do it. And this has been the big challenge I have had lately. And I uh, want to give a couple tips that have helped me and, and have, have made progress as far as getting my kid to clean up. One of them is, is use positive reinforcement. Because you can often, and I have to catch myself doing that. Because you see the Ben Affleck meme where he's outside smoking. And it's like when you just cleaned up and you hear the toy box dump over and it's like, no, I get that. And sometimes my kid, you know, I swear she pulls something out. She looks at it, puts it, you know, it's, and we're not talking like pulls one little thing out. No, she'll pull out like 18 Barbies and look at them and then that was it. And then she moves on to the next thing. And I have to stop myself from being like, stop. Because you're like, after a while, you're like, stop pulling stuff out. But it's like, no, no, you can play. We just need to learn how to put things away. And a good tip and shout out to my mom, because this is one of the things she taught me when I was a kid. She said, you know, if you take five minutes before you go to bed, clean up your room a little bit you're never gonna have to spend an afternoon cleaning it up you just do it gradually and I've taught my kid that and it took a while with this positive reinforcement um, to create the habits and that's the, that's kind of step two is you want to create the habit so without getting upset or putting in a mean way I say to my kid like hey see can we just take a second and can you go put these socks in the hamper or like Hey, we're going to watch TV, but can we clean up this board game that you were doing? And sure enough, after some time of doing this, I, we have hit a point where my kid says, oh, wait, I got to clean up my markers. And it's like the first time she did it, I went, oh, my God, we, we have we have made some progress here. We're we're actually we're actually cleaning up without having to have it pointed out and, you know, right away. Uh, so so don't give up. And, and those are my two tips. I don't know if it works for everybody. Uh, but definitely the positive reinforcement and just helping create those habits, I think, you know, and I would say, you know, I, this is fine, but let's just get into, and I, I would even say that, let's get into the habit of putting our socks in the hamper when we get home, because depending on your kid, my kid comes home, shoes are off, socks are off, like, <laughs> we go through like five pairs of socks a day, because she'll come home from school, socks are off, and then we're going to do something else, or she's going outside, or we're going to whatever activity or class, and she gets a new pair of socks. <laughs> we go through like three, four pairs of socks a day. And I swear, it's like, oh, and it's like, okay, you know, luckily your socks are little. <laughs> going at, going, losing, losing money on a laundry detergent here. All right, let's get into some common sense. 
I will say Common Sense has been a tentpole of Go Tell It to the Wall. Uh, it was never intended to directly be Common Sense, but that was clearly the theme um, kind of having to do with everything. And I will say this was further down, but I'm going to not repeat that. Uh, so, and part of that was this was never supposed to involve politics. If you listen to episode zero and even probably episode one and two, I said we're not going to talk politics. And I, to this day, contest that we still don't. We talk about politicians, but we utilize what? Common sense. Uh, and then, of course, what happened was not long after we launched this podcast, the Orange Menace was elected. So we had to talk about it because so many people close to me, friends and family, uh, were adversely affected by certain policies that came out. I mean, we've seen it, the, the, the rise of Nazis, the hatred toward Judy, Judaism and Jews, uh, the, the persecution of women's rights. Uh, the persecution of the LGBTQ community. Uh, so, so to me, it's not political. We don't talk policy and stuff like that. We use common sense. And that, that is kind of how that evolved over the years. And, and we've had so many crazy things that I've literally come in here and yelled at a wall. I mean, we recorded an episode a couple, couple uh, few days after January 6th, um, uh, 2021. Yeah, 2021. We did. You know, and and so there's been a lot of ranting and raving, and that that's kind of where common sense came from. And in fact, for those of you watching on the video, you don't see a lot of these, but our very first sticker was basic because we were had an artist working on a logo for us, and it just it's a long sticker. It says hashtag common sense, and underneath it has the URL Sean O'Rourke Live. Uh, that that was kind of how we got to that point, and we utilize it every week, and it turned into a title. Of, uh, of an episode series here with Common Sense Sundays. Uh, so recently, Pat, this was a couple weeks ago, Musk, good old Elon out there, uh, he put on a cowboy hat and went to the U.S.-Mexico border in Texas, I'm sure. I don't know where it was. I didn't even, you know, I saw the clips. I didn't listen to any of it. I don't care what this gas bag has to say. Uh, he's basically just a big troll at this point. I swear, like, I can't tell if he's the dumbest person on the face of the earth or if he's one of the smartest and this is just kind of his way of going about life, I, I can't figure it out. Uh, but this is all he's doing. He's just, just trolling. He did, did nothing good by going to the border. Uh, on top of that, he decided to put on a cowboy hat and head to the border. And apparently the man does not know how to wear a cowboy hat because he had it on backwards. I'm not a cowboy hat wearer. In fact, and if you choose to wear a cowboy that's fine. But in my opinion... You don't need a cowboy hat unless you're a cowboy. That, that's just how I am. So I, cowboy hats never come into my life, but even I know the proper way to wear a cowboy hat. Not difficult. <laughs> he wore the thing backwards. And then in response to people pointing out that he was wearing it backwards and something about guns or something, he decided to show a video of him in a very large gun and shooting this very large gun, which I did not care for in the least. And I don't understand why anyone listens to Musk. The fact that this man has any admirers whatsoever anymore is just astounding to me. Just find, find somebody better to look up to, for God's sake. All right, uh, fact check reminder. You know, we talked about the news headlines being removed and everything else, and, and literally there was a tweet recently from Musk saying, uh, I don't get my news from mainstream media. I come on to Twitter and scroll through and get real news. And it's like, dude... The majority of people on here are spreading misinformation. So this is your reminder to make sure you're fact-checking everything, especially nowadays. There is a lot of stuff going on in the world. Um, for those of you wondering, I am, I'm not addressing a certain thing. I am not knowledgeable at all in that situation. I'm just not. So I'm not going to address it specifically uh, because I'm not, cap I'm not equipped to do that. But if you are looking for information on that plea and anything else, um, please, 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 please make sure you're fact checking. I mentioned this a few episodes ago. We're in an election cycle now, a presidential election cycle. Going to be a lot of misinformation thrown around. And this is compounded uh, by AI because you can I, like you can see certain. In fact, that's one that has been going crazy is people have been using AI uh, to create fake Pixar movie posters and stuff. And it's it's getting pretty out of hand. So if you if you see something, don't. Take that as fact until you have fact checked it because you can't you can't believe you. I, I always say you can't believe everything. You almost can't believe anything nowadays that you see on the Internet. 
All right, moving along. Uh, Trump and nuclear secrets. There's reports that he shared some nuclear secrets with some rich dude, I believe from Australia, as he was out golfing. Because this is what you do. You go golfing with a fellow rich dude and you talk about highly classified secrets uh, for the country that you were once president of, supposedly. <laughs> now, I know he was actually president. He just didn't do a good job of it. Uh, and there was hardly any... It's funny. There was a few people were like, why isn't anyone talking about this? But there was hardly any media coverage or outrage or anything. Uh, and I've come to realize that it's because that's just par for the course for him now. He said he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and blah, 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 all this other stuff. And it's like, well, yeah, he probably could do that. But he's done stuff just as bad. <laughs> he's sharing secrets with foreign powers. And we're all just numb to it now because that's normal for the Orange Menace. We can do much better. We, This guy cannot... Be allowed to just continue on his unhinged rants and lying and misinformation and everything else. It's utterly ridiculous. And I'd like to point out this is the same guy that used to get his crowd chanting lock her up because there was potentially, potentially a leak of sensitive information. Could have been. There wasn't. There could have been a leak of sensitive information. Yet he's just giving it out. It's just a little coffee talk for him <laughs> or golf talk. Is that a thing? I don't golf. I think it's a. It's fine if you want to golf, but to me, golf courses are a waste of grass. Uh, it's golf talk, I guess. Just talk about nuclear secrets. All right, RFK Jr. Speaking of gas bags, holy hell! <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> the Orange Menace is bad, but shit, <laughs> it's like the evil, you know. I guess <laughs> I probably still rather have that son of a bitch than this son of a bitch. I don't know. Uh, today, he actually announced today that he is running as an independent for pres for the office of presidency now, for President of the United States of America, no longer running as a Democrat, so he will not be a, a challenger to Biden, which he really wasn't to begin with. Um, and we kind of knew this was going to come. He has just been mucking up the political landscape. Remember, this is the guy that believes polio vaccines. I, I don't even look. I, I, I've stopped even listening to anything he says because none of it is truthful. None of it. Uh, and I will say we have hit a point. I know people like Cheryl Hines. We've hit a point where she is just complicit. She used to say, like, I'm I'm not involved in my husband's politics. And it's like, but your husband's a raving fucking maniac. Like, you can say you're not involved, but you're fucking married to him. Like, come on. And uh, we've hit a point because she literally introduced him today at a press conference where he announced that he's going to be running as an independent. And basically, st I, the funny thing is I think he's taking votes from both sides there. It's like... That's the thing is everyone, oh, he's going to pull votes from Biden. And it's like, yeah, but he's probably also going to pull votes from the unhinged people that are voting for the orange one because he's he's crazier, if anything, you know. And so we'll see how that unfolds. All right. Entertainment news. And we're going to wrap it up here. I got to go eat some dinner. Get a little hungry here. All right. Entertainment news. NFL and Taylor Swift. Good Lord. <laughs> NFL's really leaning into it. I know I mentioned this when it kind of first broke and everything, and I thought it was hilarious. And I still think to an extent it is hilarious because now it's at the point where it's like, okay, everybody's on this thing. It's hilarious. And I always I always say, stop beating those memes to death. And it's like, that, you know, we get it and everything else. And I did think, but I am also hitting a point of fatigue when it comes to the NFL, Travis Kelsey, and Taylor Swift. Uh, and it has gotten ridiculous. And it seems like everybody is because even Travis Kelsey came out and was like, okay, it's getting a little out of hand, everyone. And clearly it's a money grab from the NFL because they have had increased revenues because of it, increased ratings because of it. Uh, in fact, I even saw, and I didn't fact check this, so I don't know, but uh, apparently they had put a special like uh, reflective sticker uh, on the box. For those of you not familiar with stadiums, you sit in the, like if you pro even if you don't watch sports, you probably saw some clips of Taylor Swift. That's like a little private box. And so they would put one of those reflective stickers so that the camera uh, operators would be able to, pan right to where Taylor Swift is and throw sh throw her <laughs> show her uh, her image throughout the game because they were getting more ratings because of it and interestingly I'm, I'm going to be curious to look at the ratings she didn't show up to the game this past Sunday she went to two games in a row and didn't show up to the, the most recent Chiefs game that wasn't in Kansas City uh, and to be fair the second one she went to was in New York and I believe she lives in New York so it might, you know maybe it was some of that and this was in Minnesota um, although Min I think Minnesota is still nice right now. I was going to say nobody wants to go to Minnesota in December. It's not, that's more of like December, January when it's just 
packed with snow. It's freezing cold and everything else. Uh, but I think everyone's a little bit over it. And, and let's just relax on it. We get it. <laughs> like, but we also just kind of want to, people just want to watch the game. Uh, so I think there's definitely some fatigue going on. But NFL is going to milk it as, as far as, as much as they can. Because they are all about the money. That's their bottom line. Uh, the Writers Guild strike is officially over. Uh, it, it technically ended um, like a week, week and a half ago. Uh, but the new contract was officially ratified today. So today it is officially, officially official uh, that the writers strike is over um, and still need. Now, that is a good thing, but we still need um, Screen Actors Guild. Uh, we are going to need the studios to to come back to the table with them and, and, and have a fair contract negotiated uh, before we really see everything ramp up back to work. Uh, obviously, it's good that writers can work, but we still have actors uh, who cannot work. And then because of that, you have crew people who work on sets that can't work. Uh, even with writers working, you can't shoot stuff because the actors can't work to an extent. I, like late night shows are back. Uh, but when it comes to television shows and films and stuff, all of that's still on hold uh, because we still have the Screen Actors Guild strike going on. All right, Star Wars shows. This is just, I just threw this in here because I have gone down a rabbit hole. Uh, you know, and I've mentioned before, I cannot keep up with the Marvel stuff. I gave up. It's too, multiple multiverse and timelines and all this. I can't, it's just too much. Um, but I, and I, you know, I, I've always been a Star Wars fan. I have a little, there's literally a Yoda collection to my left. And it features a Burger King watch from like the early 2000s with Yoda on it. I've, I've loved Yoda since I was a kid and always enjoyed the Star Wars films. I saw uh, the first seven all in theaters. Um, you know, so I, I do watch. Um, I had watched the first two seasons of Mandalorian and stuff like that. And of course, Ahsoka came out. I'm also a big Rosario Dawson fan, obviously, because I am a Kevin Smith fan. And she is part of the Kevin Smith universe, uh, you know, as, as playing a character in Clerks 2 and 3. Um, so I, I am a big Rosario Dawson fan, so I was like, I'm going to check it out. And I got about 10 minutes into the episode, and there was things I could just tell. And here's the other thing. The last thing I worked on at Disney uh, was Rebels, which is an animated show for Disney XD that they that launched year, I mean, oh, God, 2014. Um, and I'd never watched the show. So I'm watching this, and I could tell there were references. You know, I think you can still watch it without doing it, but I went, you know what? <laughs> this is doing this, like, at night. My, my, I think my wife had just fallen asleep, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to watch. And I look up chronologically, like, because you have the films, uh, but all the, there's all these shows and there's Clone Wars and there's Bad Bunch and there's Obi-Wan Kenobi and there's Rebels and there's, oh my gosh, so many other, so many things. And, and all the films, obviously, but I have seen the films. I, I saw the first seven in theaters, but I have seen all the films. I've seen Rogue One and, and Solo and um, that stuff, but I, not the shows. So I have gone down a rabbit hole. Uh, and this was a few, this was weeks ago that I did this. And uh, some of it I half pay attention. That's the thing. And, and I had somebody say to me, uh, like, with cause Clone Wars is like seven seasons. And they are short episodes. They're animated, geared toward an older audience because there's some violence in it and stuff. Um, but seven, seven seasons. I'm like, oh, my God. But I did realize there's certain episodes that you can kind of just let play. And, and uh, a good way that uh, somebody put, to, put it to me is you have these side quest episodes. Uh, that aren't necessarily moving along the overall uh, story arc that is um, Star Wars and Clone Wars and, and Attack of, you know, it's basically Clone Wars is between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, Bad Batch is like right after Revenge of the Sith. It's it's interesting how the timelines play out. So right now I'm, I've just finished up Bad Batch and I'm getting into Obi-Wan next, looking forward to Rebels, but I really want to watch Ahsoka. And uh, man, I wouldn't say I don't recommend it, but I, pr I don't recommend it because it's a lot of like, oh my God, can I... I just, I just want this information, and it's good. I highly recommend Clone Wars and Bad Batch. They are, they are good shows, good animated shows. Uh, even if you're not into animation, they are, it, it's, it is animated, but it is good storytelling as well. Um, so, so check those out. Um, we had a new, tra a new song, new track from Blink-182. And you might remember the last episode. I talked about the single they released and how terrible it was. Well, Wall fans, I must confess, the new song they put out called Dance With Me, I really like it. It's pretty good. It's a little homage to the Ramones, and the song itself is quite good. Uh, so it gets me a little more excited uh, for the new Blink album that is coming out. I don't know, it's coming out in like October, isn't it? This month. I think it's coming out this month. I don't know. 
uh, everything will tell me and then I'll go download it. And even if I hate it, I'm still going to pay for it and download it because I own every Blink album and blah, 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 blah. But the new song, it's pretty good. Old school Blink fans uh, might appreciate it. Uh, speaking of album drops, The Drowns, one of my absolute favorite bands on the face of the earth, uh, they announced that they, and I, I, I knew they were pretty much done because uh, I, I know those guys personally and uh, I talked to them back in May. And they were they were like, yeah, we're just about done um, with the album. Uh, they have finished the album for the most part. Obviously, there's all kinds of other stuff to go into, pressing records and stuff. Uh, but they have announced that the new record that they have coming uh, will come out in February 2024. And you probably get some singles before then. But February 2024, a new full-length album from The Drowns. And another album that's actually coming out this week comes out Friday. Friday the 13th, October 13th. Uh, another band that I absolutely love, one of my favorite bands, and know them personally, and that is the Dolly Rots. Uh, their new album, Night Owls, is coming out on Friday, and they have released a couple singles uh, from that album as well, but if you are a Dolly Rots fan, make sure you're checking that out. Oh, and one more thing. I don't, don't have it written down. I'll, pro- I'll talk about it before we finish out the month. So we got a Halloween episode coming uh, at the end of this month, so look forward to that, where I wear this ridiculous, it's actually hanging on the back of my chair. Because uh, for those of you watching video, you're probably like, why is there a purple jacket on your door instead of the Muppet? And, well, I had to, needed somewhere to hang that for now, and I got this Muppet hoodie behind me. Uh, but that would be ba- uh, Basis Against Racists. Their October release is actually not an artist, as it has been uh, through all the iterations that they've done. It is actually multiple options of their basic shirt. And I don't mean basic because like how the kids say, that's basic. I'm like, no, no, no. Uh, it just... It says what the backs of the shirts say. It says basis against racist. It's on the front. Uh, and there are multiple color options. There's a white one and a black one and like four different colors. Or no, I, I w- it might be two colors that you can get either pink or purple on a black or a white shirt. Uh, and you'll be able to pre-order those this month. And I believe those, uh, the profits from this one is actually going to go to um, breast cancer organizations. Uh, because we are almost in November, and November is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, so make sure you pick up one of those if you're interested. Pre-order. You have till the end of the month to pre-order. Uh, I'll probably grab one because they made a black one with purple print, and I was like, well, can't pass up uh, anything purple. <laughs> I mean, I can, but I love Bases Against Racists, always supporting. I actually don't have that one with just the, the uh, words on the front, uh, so I'll probably pick up a purple one for myself. But make sure you're getting that through uh, either Chaos Merch or T-Mom merch over there in Europe. And uh, you have till the end of October to, to pre-order that one. All right, that is going to do it uh, on our official, official seventh anniversary episode. Uh, not of Go Tell to the Wall, but of Common Sense Sundays, but it is all under the Go Tell to the Wall umbrella. I do want to take a second and thank all of you out there. I know people are listening that have literally been listening for seven years, people that have been listening for five years, four years, two years, like a couple months. Thank you all. You you don't understand how appreciated uh, you are uh, and, and how it keeps me motivated to come in here and yell at a wall, talk about things. Uh, and, and honestly, for the most part, uh, it can be stressful, but it is, uh, for the most part, fun. And we will be putting together a, a in-person celebration for everyone that has, has thrown so much support uh, over the last seven years. All right, like I said, that is going to do it uh, for episode 116 of Common Sense Sundays with Go Tell It's the Wall, hosted by me, your absolute favorite podcast, the podcast hoster, host, jeez, the one and only Sean O'Rourke. Sometimes words are difficult, Wall fans. Uh, real quick before we go, don't forget to uh, follow our page on Facebook, facebook.com slash go tell it to the wall. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash go tell it to the wall or at tell, go tell it to the wall on YouTube. Uh, of course, my own personal Instagram account, which is at SoCalSean, S-O-C-A-L-S-E-A-N. Uh, and don't forget to bookmark and check back often on SeanOR'RourkeLive.com for exclusive content that doesn't get posted anywhere else, as well as links to our Patreon campaign and links to our merch website if you want to help us out financially and keep all of this madness afloat and running. All right, uh, real quick housekeeping update. Uh, no episode next weekend. Have a scheduling conflict uh, that's keeping me busy all weekend. I'll be honest, it's a it's a fam- family member's wedding, so I'm just not going to have time to get into the studio, uh, and they are actually getting married on a Sunday, uh, so we're just going to p- 
push it to the week after. Um, so no, no episode a week from now, but we should be back in two weeks uh, with our usual common sense. Um, and until then, wall fans, common sensors, and of course, podcast consumers, remember, no matter what you do, no matter who you're with, no matter where you go, and especially no matter why you aren't doing it, always, always use common sense. <laughs>